pathway. Okay, okay. start now from the beginning. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Wa ba'd, alhamdulillah, we are continuing our dars of sifat wa salatu wa nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prayers of the Prophet as described. And today's our lesson is about important notes about the salatu ala nabi, sending prayers on the Prophet of the Ummah. And this is the page number 74. It can be seen that in most of these ways of sending prayers on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's no mention of Ibrahim separate from his family. The wording being, as you have sent prayers on the family of Ibrahim. The reason for this is that in Arabic, the family of man includes the man as well as dependents. Example in the words of the exalted. In Allah has chosen. Can you just read all of it in English, please? Allah has chosen Adam, Nuh, the family of Ibrahim, and the family of Imran above all people. Surah Ali Imran, ayah number 33. Okay. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. Please bear with me because I did not bring my book with me, but I've got it here on my mobile. And I would like to go ahead and explain, first of all, what are the points that we're trying to discuss here, which are considered to be important points regarding the passing of the salutation upon the Prophet ﷺ. And before that, I would like also to point out that the reason we are doing this for the second time, because we have class which is repeated, one which is for the people, the brothers in Brixton, and one which is for the brothers in Northampton. And that is why we finished the book already with the brothers in Brixton. So for those who were in Brixton and have seen this as well, they had an opportunity as well to see it again. That's why the brothers in Northampton couldn't really be on Zoom uh, because the time is not suitable for them, and that is the day of at 8 o'clock. So that's why we're doing it today for them. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, the, the, here, the benefits that the Sheikh is talking about basically are uh, revolving right around the Salah upon the Prophet. First one, he's just said, if we look at the seven supplications which is being given, uh, and those are the ones, the variety, which is Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, or Allahumma salli ala Muhammad al Nabi al Ummi, ala Ali Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Azwajihi wa Dhuriyati. Those are the examples that we have given seven types of supplications upon the Prophet. ﷺ. We have seen there that the mentioning of Ibrahim alayhi salam on his own is not there. It's either Ibrahim or it is. Uh, sorry, it's either Ibrahim and Al Ibrahim, uh, or, or it is uh, Al Ibrahim on his own. So there is no Ibrahim by himself. So we have either Ibrahim and Al Ibrahim together, or we have Al Ibrahim on his own, but we never have Ibrahim on his own. So always Ibrahim and Al Ibrahim, or Al Ibrahim. Al Ibrahim is in the family Ibrahim. And because we have the family of Ibrahim, means the family Ibrahim will include Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then he gives an example here in Surah Ali Imran. In Allah has taught Adam wa Nuh wa Ali Ibrahim wa Ali Imran ala alamin. Allah had chosen Adam and Nuh and the family of Ibrahim. So the family of Ibrahim includes Ibrahim, and the family of Imran that includes Imran ala alamin. So he chose them. So when you say the Al, the family, the person is including in the family. The same thing is going to give as well another example. Illa ala lutin najinahum bi sahar except for the family of Lut, family of Lut includes Lut himself and other examples as well. Then we go to the sayings of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. So can I just ask you uh, Sheikh to read me from the Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah what he said. Jump a bit. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says most of the versions have as you've sent prayers on the family of Ibrahim and as you sent blessings on the family of Ibrahim, some have Ibrahim himself this is because of all prayers and purifications on them. I didn't hear that word. This is because he is the cause of all prayers and purifications on them. The rest of his family are secondary recipients of all that. To show these two points, both wordings have been employed separately. Sorry. Go ahead, please. Father, there is a well-known question among the people of knowledge about the nature of the comparison in his statement. As you sent prayers on... Okay. So now we're going to go to a second point. 
So basically, uh, the Sheikh Al-Islam Tamir emphasizes that point, and he says that the Al-Ibrahim includes Ibrahim. Um, if you revise, as I said, the seven supplications, none of them has got Ibrahim on his own. It's either Ibrahim and Al-Ibrahim, or Al-Ibrahim on his own. Al-Ibrahim includes Ibrahim. Then he comes to the point which he wants to do in this first point. He says that, you know when I say, for example, may Allah give you barakah like he gave such and such barakah. May Allah give you the same barakah or give you barakah just like he gave Abu Bakr barakah. So when we say this, definitely the one that we are saying that may Allah give you like him, that him will have either the same barakah as, your, as the one we're going to try to get or the other one, him, is better. We will not give you a comparison to somebody who's going to be less than you. So may Allah give you barakah as Abu Bakr. Definitely Abu Bakr has got you know, the maximum barakah. Either the same as Abu, Abu Bakr or less than Abu Bakr. You could not, because I will not gonna give you something which is less than what you are already. So we, when we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, ala li Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim, ala, does that even mean that Ibrahim is better than Muhammad? So we say, oh Lord, pass salutation upon Prophet Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, like you've passed a salutation upon Ibrahim and Ali Ibrahim. Automatically you think that the Ibrahim and Ali Ibrahim have better salutation because we're trying to give Muhammad Sallallahu and his Ali and his family the same thing as Ibrahim or maybe less than that. Not, but not more because it's more. Why should I give him? Why should I give him to? I have to compare him to somebody else which is better than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says here that there is a book, Al Fath Al Jala, two books discuss this issue and they brought about 10 explanations for this. We're concerned about the one which is correct, which is the, one of these 10 opinions, which will give us the correct understanding how this comparison work. Ibn al-Qayyim, please can rush, is Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullah, he says, from those sayings, that Al-Ibrahim, do you read that, Shaykh Abdul Raza? Ibn al-Qayyim says, this is the best of all the previous views that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one of the family of Ibrahim. In fact, he is the best of the family of Ibrahim. As Ali, bin Abi, Ali ibn Talha has related from Ibn Abbas anhu, about the saying of exalted, Allah has chosen Adam, Nuh, the family of Ibrahim and the family of Imran above all people. Ibn Abbas said, Muhammad is among the family of Ibrahim. This is text for the fact that if other prophets descended from Ibrahim are included in his family, then the inclusion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is more fitting. Hence, I was saying, as you send prayers on the family of Ibrahim, includes the prayers sent on him and on the rest of the Prophet descended from Ibrahim. Allah has then ordered us to specifically send prayers on Muhammad and his family as much as we send prayers on him, along with the rest of Ibrahim family generally. Therefore, Prophet's family receives out of that what is appropriate for them, leaving all the reminders to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not the reminders, the remainings. The remainings, yes, the remainings, leaving the remainings for him. There is no doubt that the total amount of prayers received by Ibrahim's family with the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, among them is greater than the, the received by the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone. Therefore, let me explain the Sheikh Razak because it's maybe it's not really as clear as it sounds when, it, when you read it. Basically, when we say, Oh Lord, give salutation upon the Prophet Muhammad and his family, like you've given the salutation and the barakah upon Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim, first of all, we have the Prophet of Allah and the family of the Prophet. Of Allah. Definitely, the Prophet's family they had a lot more because. When we say that give salutation upon the family of Muhammad, the same salutation you're giving to Ibrahim, who's a prophet, along his al, which are including prophets. Ibrahim came from him, Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub and all, uh, and all of these prophets, Yusuf, and all the prophets descending down to Dawood, to, to Musa, alayhi salam, and Dawood, alayhi salam, and Suleiman, alayhi salam, down to Isa, alayhi salam, and including Muhammad alayhi salam, himself. So those, the, the, the family of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam definitely going to get a lot better. As for the remaining, he says, so because they can't be this family of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the family of Muhammad having got any prophet, they cannot reach 
the same level of the prophets, but they will have the barakah. So the remaining of the prophets goes on to the, to the Prophet Muhammad. So here we're saying, O oh Lord, pass salutation, a special one to Muhammad. And on top of that, whatever you give in salutation upon Ibrahim and upon his al, which includes prophets, which includes also with them Muhammad himself, go double now. Because by, by saying, O oh Lord, pass salutation on Ibrahim and Al Ibrahim, Muhammad is included. Because he's from the Al of Ibrahim. And the Prophet of Allah, he said, the most prophet that I look like him is me. Muhammad Sallallahu looks like Ibrahim alayhi salam. So he will get the double, that's what it is. Going to the second benefit, please. Zakallahu khair. There's no doubt that the total amount of praise received can, by Ibrahim... Can I, can I say second benefit, second benefit? You're still reading for the first benefit, second benefit. Okay. The reader will see that this part of the prayer with all its different types is always a sending of prayers on the family of the Prophet وسلم, on his wives and children as well as himself. Therefore, it is neither from the Sunnah nor carrying out of the Prophet's command to leave it at O oh Allah, send prayers on Muhammad only. Rather, one of these complete types of supplication must be used as is reported from his actions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether in the first or in the last tashahud. There is text about this from Imam Shafi'i and in Al-Um, the tashahud in the first and the second instance is the same thing, by tashahud. I mean, the bearing of witness and the sending of prayers of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, neither will be suffice without the other. Okay. Basically here, when we see the second benefit, that, to say the complete salutation upon the Prophet ﷺ is not enough to say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, without the Al. You have to put the Al Muhammad. So you have to bring this complete. And there is no difference, he says, between the first tashahud and the second tashahud. This is important. So in the first tashahud and in the second tashahud, we say, Tahiyyatu lillah, and also, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa Ali Ibrahim, inna ka hamidun majid wa barik ala Muhammadin, to the end. So we also say that, okay? Right now, he says here that, he comes then further on, that as for those scholars who said that the middle tashahud is shorter than the second one, depending upon a hadith which is not authentic, which is that it would not increase in the two rak'ah, that means in the first tashahud, onto the tahiyyat, it does not include the salah upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and Ali Ibrahim, this is not authentic as in the da'ifa five, eight, one, six. So that is, we say that it is not authentic. What has been here is not authentic. Now, we're going to go to a discussion that Sheikh Al-Albani here, he says with a person called Muhammad Is'af and the Shashib. You got that in uh, Sheikh Abdurazak? That discussion where it says that this person basically, he had denied the Salah upon the Al of the Prophet. You, you have to say only Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, not Ali Muhammad. Even though the Sheikh Al-Bani says that this is being mentioned already in the Sahihain, Bukhari and Muslim. Okay? So why this man is, he basically he refutes him, the Sheikh Al-Bani, because he brings something which is a common between all innovators. And that is, they depend upon their uh, power in language of the Arabic when putting aside the Sunnah of the Prophet And the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah is the one that explains the Quran properly. No matter how good is your Arabic language, you will never be able to come to the correct explanation of an action or of a sunnah or anything mentioned in the Quran. So what is his proof? This man is called Muhammad Is'af al Nashashibi. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. And pass me, sallu alayhi, pass salutation upon him, um, pray upon him, pass prayer upon him, and sallimu taslima. And not only that, he said, the Sahaba, how can they come and ask the Prophet of Allah the meaning of the prayers when they know it? But he has said, the Shaykh al-Albani is running off from the fact these companions, when they came to the Prophet, they did not ask about the meaning of the prayers. They've asked how to pray on you. What is the way to do it? So he said to them, Qulu Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, as we have taught you in those, uh, in those supplications that we have mentioned before. So, and this is, as I said, a number of times, 
if you can't really take the explanation of the companions along with the the interpretation of the Quran and the explanation of the Prophet of Allah himself along with the explanation of the Quran, you are going to go astray. You're going to take yourself, regardless of how good you are in the language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّدَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِ وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ We have sent upon you the dhikr. A dhikr means here, sunnah. لِتُبَيِّدَ لِلنَّاسِ In order to show to the people مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِ What has been revealed to them from the book. So you've got here two revelations. So Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ We have sent upon you the dhikr. Why? In order to show to the people what is being revealed to them. This is Surah al -Dahl. So here is being revealed to them. What is that? Quran. So what is the dhikr that is going to be explaining to them? It's a sunnah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, I've been putting the Quran and similar to it, which is a sunnah. Also he said that Jibreel used to come with the Quran and also used to come with the, with the sunnah. So Quran comes in, and the sunnah comes in. Both together. So both are Revelation. Now we come to uh, the basically the point number. What which, which point we're coming now to? Point number three. three. Yes, because uh, there's no point of uh, going into the refutation of this person. Point number three. The right. reader will also see that in none of these types of salah on the Prophet وسلم, is there the word of Sayyid, chief or leader. The latest scholars have differed about the validity of his inclusion in the Ibrahimi salah. Due to lack of space, we'll not go into the details of that nor make mention of those who rejected his validity in keeping with the Prophet ﷺ complete teaching to his ummah when he instructed, say, O oh Allah, send prayers on Muhammad. On being asked about the manner of salah on him, but we will quote on the Hafid ibn Hajar al-Asqalani on this bearing in mind his position as one of the good Shafi'i scholars of both hadith and fiqh. For contradiction on this teaching of the Prophet ﷺ has become widespread among Shafi'i scholars. Okay. Basically, the third point is to do with Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Say the word Sayyidina. I've been taught this when I was a kid. But I realized later on it's not correct. First of all, let's establish the fact that our Prophet is our Sayyidina. When they came to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, You anta Sayyiduna. The Prophet said, As Sayyidullah. As Sayyidullah. It doesn't mean. But I'm not your Sayyid. But he said, Say something like what he's saying, but don't let the Shaytan take you further and then you start giving me titles which will be making me equal to that. And that's why the Prophet said, Do not praise me like the Christians. I praise Isa salam so much, I made him like a God, but say, Abdullah, slave of Allah, wa rasulu, the messenger of Allah. So when, we know now the fact that Abdullah wa rasulu is a praising to the Prophet. That's how we pray the messenger of Allah, Abdullah wa rasulu. It doesn't mean that we can't say he's Sayyid. He's our Sayyid. Sayyiduna Rasulullah. We could say Sayyid even to a normal person. Prophet, وسلم, he said, let the slave to say to his master, Sayyidi wa Mawlai, but not to say Rabbi, my Lord. Even he's his Lord, Rabbi. And let the Sayyid, which is the master, to say to his slave, that is Fatai, Ghulami, Fatati, fatai, that means my boy, not to say Abdi, my slave. But we do have that the Sayyid and the Abd, he's is a slave. But because Sharia came, they eliminate anything that would make something that a person taking another person, something which is equal to God. So he is our Sayyid, the Prophet, Sayyid Rasulullah. No doubt about that. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in our supplication, in our prayer as well, we don't do except what the Prophet of Allah told us. What did he tell us? What he told the companions when he asked the Messenger of Allah. This is the prayer upon you. So how do you make salutation upon you? He said, Qulu, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. How do you do this? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama salli ta'ala. He taught them how to do it. This is, this is, when he said, and we don't say, ah, he didn't say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad out of humbleness. That's not correct. Why? Because if it is out of humbleness, the companions later on, they would have said, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So if the Prophet Allah taught them this out of 
humble Nasir did not say because we, we know for a fact whenever the Prophet Allah mentions his name, he doesn't say Waqala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He doesn't say that the Prophet Allah himself. But we say it, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But this is something different. Why? Because when the Prophet Allah taught them, he told them, say this. So we have to stick with it. Number two, that if there was out of humbleness, the companions after the death of the Prophet Allah, or the Prophet Allah is not present, they will start saying, instead of Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. But they haven't said it. So we can't say it's out of what respect. Jump to point number four, Jazakallahu khair. By the way, is that all the point is all of it about this, isn't it? Yes? Yeah. Okay. That's correct. So we come to, because um, maybe you need to come to the sayings of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu arda, saying of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. There's a hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and that hadith is not authentic, which is, in he, which he says, Allahumma ja'al fada'ila salawatika wa rahmatik, upon the Sayyid of the Mursaleen. He is Sayyid of the Mursaleen. But that supplication is not them. Did you find it? Yes. Okay, read it, please. Yes, it is related in the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud that in his salah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would say, O oh Allah, send the best of your prayers, mercy and blessings of leader, Sayyid of the messengers, etc. Transmitted by Ibn Majah. But it's, it's not as weak. So the hadith of Ali transmitted by Al-Tabarani with acceptable Islam's text precedence. This hadith has difficult words which I have reported and explained in the book of Fadl nabi Excellence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Abu Al-Hasan Al-Faris. Some of stop, stop, stop. Jazakallah khairan. Hmm. Uh, this could be for the student of knowledge to read it. Go to point, please, number four. Point number four. No. It should be known that types number one and four are the ones which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught his companions when they ask about the manner of salah on him. So this has been used as evidence that these are the best ways of doing the salam of, of the salam on him. For he would not choose anything for them or himself except the best and the noblest. Imam al-Nawawi has mentioned in those in the Rawda of Talibin that if a man were to take an oath to do the best possible salah on the Prophet وسلم, this could not be fulfilled except in these ways. Subki has given another reason. Let me just say, uh, this point is to do with that some of the scholars have said that the best of the salah upon the Prophet وسلم, out of those suffering supplications that we've given you is number one and number four. The reason behind this is because when the companion asked him, how Messenger of Allah was going to pass salutation upon him, and he told him, Kulu. So he, the Prophet of Allah, he must have chosen for them the best. But to say that this, what he had just so chosen for them for the best, maybe is questionable because he had chosen for them something which is, that is one of those things. And that is what Imam Nawi, he said, <laughs> if a person he had made an oath that I'm going to make the best salutation onto the Prophet of Allah and he picked up one of those seven, he did not make something wrong in his oath. His oath would be fulfilled. Is that understandable? understandable? So any of those is the best, but he chooses basically for dua number one. Can you read for me dua number one and dua? Can you just go back to your book? Dua number one and dua number four, Ya Sheikh Abdul Razak. Jazakallah. Dua number one. <coughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ahli baytihi wa ala azwajihi wa dhurriyatihi kama sallayta ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala baytihi wa ala kama barakta ala 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 Ibrahim well, the second yeah, part, I'm you, I'm the, I'm chef, chef, the second part you broke. So can you say the second part? First part was I'm recording, so you broke off. Part. Wabarik ala Muhammad wa ala ali baytihi wa ala azwajihi wa dhurriyatihi 
kama barakta ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidum majid and then that's number 1 yeah number 4 please number 4 allahumma salli ala muhammadin nabiyyil ummi wa ala ali muhammadin kama sallaita ala ala ali ibrahim wa barik ala muhammadin nabiyyil ummi wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ali ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamidum majid jazakallahu khairan we go to the fifth now and uh, the just second to last one shall we number fifth abdul point number five <coughs> no it it should be known that it is not valid to combine all this way into one way of salah and the same goes for the different tashabbus given previously in fact that will be an innovation in the religion the sunnah is to say different ones at different times as sheikh al islam ibn taymi has explained in his discussion of the takbir of the two eid in a majmu al fatawa right i'm making the fifth point we are not allowed to mix these seven du'as together and choose and pick from here some words and pick from here those words and then we make another one du'a like for example when we say allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidum majid allahumma barik ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ibrahim innaka hamidum majid that's du'a number 2 so if we say that du'a and we start saying this du'a and we take a part from du'a number 4 into it like اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد that's not correct because i've added from this number four and i put to number three that's not right and that's called bid'ah so what is the sunnah sheikh sami tani he said the sunnah is that you bring dua number one one time the dua number two number time the third don't make okay another of your own dua mixing this with that point number 6 please Allama Siddiq Hasan Khan says in his book Nuzul al-Abrar bil ilm al-ma'thur min al min al min al-ad'iya wal adhkar after giving many ahadith about the excellence of repeated salah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in page 161 say there's no doubt that the foremost among the muslim in sending the salah on him sallallahu alaihi wasallam are the people of hadith and the narrators of purified sunnah for it is one of their duties in this noble branch of learning to make salah on him before every hadith and so okay. their tongues oh, they, um, bismillah oh, point number 6 basically that the ones who pass the salutation upon the prophet sallam the most are ahlul hadith Ahlul Hadith is not the one which, for example, in Birmingham, Ahlul Hadith, the sect. No, no. The ones <coughs> who all the time, they say, Allah, Allah, Allah said, Prophet Sallam, he said. They're always in this faculty of Hadith. These are the ones who mention the Hadith of the Prophet of Allah. They're always with the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Shaykh Al-Bani brought this as well to make a sub, you know, to make you, to make dua for the Shaykh, he's going to be one of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had specified him with this knowledge which is the knowledge of the prophet of Allah imagine you're a scholar in ahl kalam there's some scholars they spend most of the times in kalam kalam to memorize the saying of such and such man and such and such man okay so that's why our sheikh mashhur abidullah his teaching now is only focused upon two tafsir al-quran on sahih muslim qal allah qad rasul he doesn't want to mention he's very good in fiqh and start bringing what this such and such saying and it gives you a headache a lot of headache because the sayings of the people could be changed so live with allah quran and live with the sunnah of the prophet that's what it is dir an nabi muhammad akhbar ni'm al matiya lil fata athar la targhabanna an hadithi wa ahli al ra'yu laylun wal hadithu nahar meaning The deen of the Prophet ﷺ is akhbar, a hadith. It is the best thing for the person to take upon. Do not swap the hadith for anything or the people of the hadith for anything. For verily, the opinion is darkness and the hadith 
is light. وَرُبَّمَا جَهِلَ الْفَتَى أَثَرَ الْهُدَى وَالشَّمْسُ بَازِغَةً لَهَا أَنْوَهُ And maybe the person who would be ignorant regarding the trace of al-huda, which is the huda, the guidance of the hadith, by the sun, verily it is shining, it's got lights. The sun here comes from the hadith of Prophet also. طيب, after this, alhamdulillah, we come to the end of the six points that we have mentioned, and I mentioned them, mashallah, very quick. We come to go for the following title, and that is standing up from the third rakah, okay, to the fourth rakah. Baba. Uh, Sheikh, there's a dua in the first shahud. Can you skip that? First dua. Sorry? Dua in the first shahud. I don't understand what you're saying. Because we are now, we just finished the sixth point. We're going to the following title. So I don't know what you are saying. The title I have in my book is Dua in the first shahud before standing up for the third and the fourth rakah. Dua in the first shahud. I don't have That's that. It. I don't have that. You don't have that. Okay, we well, so then we go straight to standing up for the third and the fourth round. And, and basically, no, this is the continuation of the point. As the Prophet Sallam, he made them in the Tashahud to say that when you sit down at Tahiyatulillah, that's part of the point in Sami. I don't know why they made it as like a title by itself. Okay? They did, yeah. Yeah. Right. So we go into the following subtitle, standing up for the Third rakah, then the fourth. Fadl. Stand, standing up for the third and then the fourth rakah. Next, he said, Allahu alayhi wa sallam will get up for the third rakah with takbir. And he ordered the one who prayed badly to do so, then he do that in the every rakah as before. When he said, Allahu alayhi wa sallam stood from the sitting position, he would say takbir and then stand up. And he said, Allahu alayhi wa sallam will raise his hands with, his, with this takbir sometimes. When he wanted to stand up for the fourth rakah, he would say, Allah is the greatest. And he ordered the one who prayed badly, Allah likewise. He would say, Allahu Akbar, go on. Uh, yes. Likewise as before, and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would raise his hands with this takbir sometimes. He would, sit, he would sit up straight on his left foot at ease until every bone returned to its proper place. Then stand up, supporting himself on the ground, and he would clench his fists, supporting himself with his hands when standing up. He would recite Al-Fatiha in both these rakahs and he ordered the one who prayed badly to do that. In Dhuhr prayer, he would sometimes add a few ayat to this as has been explained under recitation in Dhuhr prayer. Right, so standing to the third rakah, then the fourth rakah. So we finish now the first shahud. We're going to go to the Okay, to the third rakah. So I'm finishing, I'm finishing the tashahud. While I'm sitting in the position of tashahud, I would say, Allahu Akbar. As we have said, Allahu Akbar. This is at the bottom. Allahu Akbar. Before you stand up. And now you say it either with the raising of the hands or raising up first and then Allahu Akbar. And then, or Allahu Akbar first, then raising up the hands. All the three positions are correct. Remember, now we're finishing the first tashahud. I'm getting to this. So and while I'm sitting down, I don't go up. So, so while I'm sitting down, I don't, because if I get up and I'm finished, it, finish the standing up and then say takbir is wrong. This takbir is for the standing up. Okay? Right. So now, so I'm going to just say it again. Allahu Akbar together, or Allahu Akbar this, or this, or Allahu Akbar. While I'm sitting down, then I get up to the third rakah. Getting up for the fourth rakah, listen now. I will be in the second sajda, isn't it, of the third rakah? Just like I am in the second sajda of the first rakah, I'm going to the second, or in the second sajda of the third rakah, I'm going to the fourth. Please follow me. Don't lose me. So I'm now in the second sajda. I'm going up. Now, my takbir is here for both lifting up my head from the sajda and going up as well. I'm not going to make my takbir one takbir to lift up my head for the, from the sajda and another takbir to get up. Okay, so this is from the, so I'll say Allahu Akbar. So where do I say my takbir? I say it when I lift up my head. This is 
my takbir for lifting up the head from the sajda and also for standing up to the fourth rakah or to the second rakah. When I get up, as soon as I'm not to finish, and they say Allahu Akbar. Now, while you're coming up from the sajda, Allahu Akbar. Okay. Now, your hands, it could be late after the takbir, or even with, or even before. All of it's correct. But remember, raising up the hands from the second to the third is established very often. But from the third to the fourth, or from the first to the second, it's not that often. It's very rare that we find people would raise up their hands when they go to the second rakah or to the fourth rakah. But lots of people, when they make the shahud, they make raising up with the hands when they go to the third, which is the case of the Prophet. But it's sometimes, it's not all the time. All the time is the al haram. All the time is when you go to Rukur. All the time is when Samia Allah Liman Hamid. That's all the time. The rest, sometimes. Many more times than never. More time than never. So now we understood how to say Allahu Akbar. And now when you stand from the third to the fourth or the first to the second, you need to have the sitting of the rest. You remember that sitting of the rest? Relax and then you get up. I would prefer for you to make it quick because as soon as you say Allah Akbar lifting up, you're an Imam from the first rakah to the second or from the third to the fourth, people start up, get up quickly and they might be up already and you are just sitting the rest. So you have to be quick in doing that and don't sit for a long, unless you taught the people your sunnah, mashallah, some of the masajid, mashallah, you find them like praying like mashallah, tabarakallah. You know, when you go to school and the teachers and teach the students to do a particular act like we will in our countries i don't know in this country i don't think so the uh, morning queue so we have to line up and we have to do some certain acts and we do it assembly <laughs> exactly that assembly in this country is not as good as ours in there it's really we're perfected we have to perfect it properly okay and when we they, they shout at us da, da, and we should, da, 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 same thing okay <laughs> when the people knows the son of the prophet they'll be like this naturally and i remember here something that came to my mind just now at the time of saddam hussein may allah have mercy upon him he had two sons Uday and qusay who have been killed in that war war of deception so i remember a newspaper i read it which is at the time of the tyranny he was a tyrant leader at that time um a person sending a letter which is in the newspaper this letter calling upon Uday or Qusay, i think Uday, one of his sons to investigate into this masjid that he came into it and he's saying this masjid they praying weird what's the weird about it that they get up together they make ruku together they make the sujood together they're Allah Akbar is this together. You have to investigate. And I've heard about this maybe Wahhabi. So this is wrong now for them. But to be like different, and each person does like this and like this, this is the norm. This is the correct thing. But to be together properly on the Sunnah, no. And then he said as well in that newspaper, in that complaint of the day, got the feet with the feet, shoulder to the shoulder. If you want to move, then move with the Imam. So SubhanAllah, this is to condemn. Is this a good criticize? This is the same just like Allah Khairan. This is the sunnah we want. People, mashallah, implementing the sunnah. So, uh, we have finished, alhamdulillah, this. We've got a prayer now. Seven past seven. Ten, ten past seven, ten past nine. Jazakallah, we've got some time. Right, we go now to the, after that, and he says here, uh, uh when he's to get up yes he's to what depend upon his on his hand can i yajin? yes sheikh can i yajin? what is can i yajin? needing the dough yes as i would say sheikh abdul razak yeah that's correct needing the dough yeah i don't know if you see the mothers how them they make the paste in the dough okay you've seen them huh uh, doctor you've seen that 
Yeah, and then we go to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So basically, it's a fist on the ground. So what comes out now when you are going from the sajda or from the tashahud up to the third rakah or to the fourth rakah or to the second, okay? When you get up, you put your hands on the knee, support yourself on the ground, and lift up your knees. Then you lift up your hands. So you take the knees off. And when you go down, you go down with the hands first, like this, and then the knees. Don't go with the knees. Imagine that the floor of the masjid is like the masjid of the Prophet Sallam, stones. If you're gonna land in knees, you're gonna have what, doctor? Collapse, kneecap, <laughs> finished. Then have some screws, maybe there. So it has to be landing with the hands, then the knees goes down on. Right. Now, basically, we go to the, after that, Jazakallah khairan ya sheikh, yalla. To the next subtitle. Uh, but it says here, he used to recite for each two rakah al fatiha how we said that? Yeah, we, we already mentioned that, I can repeat that one. He yes, would, please, because I haven't mentioned it, that's what. He will recite al fatiha in both those rakah and he ordered the one who prayed badly to do that. In Dhuhr prayer, he would sometimes add a few ayah to this, as has been explained under recitation in Dhuhr prayer. I believe by Allah you've said it. I forgot. You've read it. Sah? You okay. have. Yes, you read it. Basically, the Prophet Sallam, in the third and the fourth, definitely will read the Fatiha, but also sometimes he would add a surah, which people they don't know about. So he would recite with it some ayat after that. So uh, the imam would be good if he's next to the microphone after he finishes the Fatiha, the third rakah or the fourth rakah, and he finished the Fatiha, he just raise up his voice to say to the people, I'm reciting another what, ayat or surah. People they think, even some of the madahib, they say, if you have recited extra ayat on top of the Fatiha and the third or the fourth, the sujood sahu. You made some, something mistake here. Yeah, it's in the fiqh of Shafi. You make a sujood sahu, which is not correct, because we have the hadith to tell us that the Prophet he would add some ayat even to the Fatiha in the third and the fourth rakah. Now we come to the qunut of al-salawat and shaykh. al qunut of salawat it takes a bit of time because I've got lots of points regarding this in my book here. By the way, this is a copy of my book with the notes of mine. Um, so I would say to, inshallah, just give the questions. Are okay, Sheikh Abdul Razak? Jazakallah khair. I think it's fine because we've got 10 minutes roughly. Before yeah. So we'll make questions and basically what I've covered just now usually normally takes me two classes. Oh, we've done very well, mashallah. Okay. Let's go to the questions and let's just give the co host please, go ahead and remember the priority to Northampton. Jazakumullah khairan, Sheikh Hana. Okay, please raise your hands for the questions. Northampton has priority. Sister from Northampton is asking, what is the proof that you raise your hands when you're getting up for the third rakah while you're sitting down? Well, we have a hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar and other hadith that always when there is takbir, there is raising up of the hands. So that's in general. So the takbir, there is a raising of the hands. That's number one. So if he's asking about the raising of the hands in particular about that, okay, but we have a number of hadith. But I'm just saying, with every time there is takbir, there is raising of the hands. Some of it is emphasized. Some of it is not emphasized. The emphasized one, which he said, uh, is the one which is takbir al-haram, ruku'ah, and sami Allah di madhab. The one which is not emphasized, and if you are an imam, you have to tell the people because they see you raising up the hands between the sajda, you might say, mm, never seen this before. So if you teach them that sunnah, inshallah, uh, I believe they will, you know, adapt to it. And But when you see the imam had made a rafa al yadayn between the two sajda, you do the same thing because in the maju'il al-imam, you tell me, imam made, that was made to be followed. Fadal. Hey, Sheikh, a sister is asking, is the dua for slaughtering Bismillah or Bismillah Allahu Akbar? There's no other type of questions. The, the Bismillah is a condition for the slaughtering to be allowed to be eaten, to be validated. So Bismillah is, is must. You could add to it Bismillah Allahu Akbar, but Allahu Akbar is not the essential one. So you can't say Allahu Akbar in slaughter. It's Bismillah. Allahu Akbar is being added 
in the uh, athar of the Sahaba. <coughs> and then, Allahumma anni wa anahli bayti. If you didn't say that, no problem, but this is a sunnah as well. This is on me and the family of me. Anni, on me, on my behalf, and on behalf of my family. If you got, you know, your wife and your children, <coughs> and so on and so forth. Now, <coughs> Northampton, please raise your hands. We have a question from a sister in High Wycombe asking about the authenticity of the hadith. If one of you gets angry when he is standing, let him sit down. And if he does not I take... Ahmed. Yeah, Ahmed. Yeah, yes, there's sir. N there. Is that N Northampton, please? Um, Can I just ask now from the people... Go ahead, N, if you're Northampton, please. Well, because you too many questions from the panel, people get bored and then they leave. Probably N. I have to be one like this, one like that. N, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, N. Fadal, yeah, N. N, Fadal, Mr. N. Okay, we can't really speak to N. I don't know there's something wrong with his mic. Sister Muslima. It might be a sister, Sheikh. They've typed their question as well. Okay, Muslima, please. Assalamu alaikum. Salam to Rakhad. Can you give a non-Muslim a mushaf which has Arabic and English in it? You can. <coughs> you can, as long as you know that this person is not going to is, you know, damage the Quran, humiliate the Quran. There's no problem. For very the Prophet وسلم, he sent uh, Qaisar, Caesar, and he sent Khosrus, king of Persia, Letters starting, Salamu ala man ittaba al huda, and Bismillah rahman al rahim. Kul yah al kitab ta'ala ila kalimatin sawa in bainana wa bainakum ala na'buda illa Allah. So these are verses from the Quran. No problem, but if she is, does not understand Arabic, <coughs> I would prefer give her just the English version. If she doesn't understand Arabic, or he or she. But if he understands Arabic, the Arabic must be there. Because the, the miracle is in the Arabic language, it's not in the English translation. No. Zakallahu khayran. Sister N, it was a sister, Sheikh, she's asking, can a woman travel to visit her husband if her husband is not able to travel to her? Okay. Uh, the question is, I don't know, it needs more explanation because I have to inter you know, interrogate the person and ask more. But I would say normally it is the case that if this sister, she, her husband cannot travel to her, let's say, I don't know what is the scenario. It's impossible for him to travel to her, okay? Let's say he's in prison. He can't travel to her, he's in prison. That's a, a good scenario for that. The sister says it's border issues. Border issues, yeah, like prison. <laughs> and she wants to travel to him. If she hasn't got a mahram, Yes. If you got a mahram, no. Let a mahram take her. Mahram means her brother, her father, her uncle, her nephew, her son, if she got a son, but he has to fulfill the following condition that he is an adult and he is a sane, not insane, Majnoon. An adult doesn't matter if he's Muslim or not Muslim. So it could be a father, non Muslim, no problem. Brother was non Muslim, is no problem. So he has to be an adult, okay, and he has to be sane. Sheikhana, she says, what if her mahram is not a Muslim because she's a revert? Is that okay? She's asking. I just said it now. You know mean? I think we are a lack of focus. I just said, it's like you haven't listened. I said, two conditions. Same, I repeat, and he has to be an adult. It doesn't matter, I said, if he's non Muslim. She could travel with a non Muslim father. I said that, but you're not focusing on it. Doesn't matter. Go on. A sister is asking about the authenticity of the hadith. If one of you gets angry when he is standing, let him sit down. And if that does not take away his anger, let him lie down. She wants to know if it's true that Imam al-Albani, rahimahullah, before he died, he made this hadith to be weak and not authentic. <coughs> this hadith, Sheikh al-Albani, based upon his opinion in the beginning, <coughs> on something that later on he discovered, it is not correct. So that hadith, Sheikh Al-Albani's view at the end, that if you get angry, if you are standing up, sit down, <clears throat> sitting down, go down, lie down, 
that is unauthentic. Alhamdulillah, it's not authentic because it does not really go with what we know about the person. You know, he sits down and comes down. It doesn't really, doesn't really work with your anger. You could be, you know, you might jump up and down still your anger is there. So it's, it's not authentic. Uh, I've got a question here from the panel here. Please go ahead, Abdullah. Oh, sorry, from there, Sheikh. No, no, tell us now because we've got one minute because of this. Uh, the brother, sister, one minute, two minutes. Nine, and there's all nine. Oh, wait, okay. So we got oh, eight. The Maghrib here, we have two because the masjid's brothers are coming to pray here, inshallah. So, Allah, bihamdik, ashhadu la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaykum.